a Philly native, Chris is author of the just released crime thriller Jane's Baby. His short fiction has appeared in Thuglet and Shroud Magazine. He also indicates that he likes pie. <laughs> So, uh, my just released novel, Nick Jane's Baby, answers the question what happened to the Jane Roe baby of Roe v. Wade landmark Supreme Court decision fame. First, I'll give you what passes as a prologue, then I'll read a scene that showcases a hit woman known as the Church Hammer. By the way, I like controversial topics. <laughs> so here's, here's the prologue. I want the boy institutionalized, Judge's father told his mother. Try it, his mother said, and I will leave you. A U.S. Senator, his father decided on a different approach, the Marine Corps. When Judge left for boot camp, they didn't hug, didn't shake hands. There was no imparting of keen insights or wisdom, no fatherly advice. His father made one simple, finally rid of your bleeping, afflicted existence comment that came directly from his black heart. They'll either kill you or cure you. His father would have been satisfied either way. Judges' affliction had embarrassed them on the grandest of stages. At President Nixon's second inauguration, when Judge was 14, a handshake, a one-finger salute, then a broken arm courtesy of the Secret Service when his affliction would let him stop the obscene gesture. When he turned 19, his father wrote the letter. The president said yes, he'd make the enlistment happen. A senator had this access, the commander-in-chief, this power. That was 38 years ago kill you or cure you. Judge waited for a bail-jumping pedophile outside of Shreveport, Louisiana, Starbucks. He sat in his van, smooth-talking his canine deputies, anticipating the guy's exit, wanting, praying the guy would try to run. Judge had proved his father wrong. The Marines had proved his father wrong. Win-win. Judge's father died knowing this. His father died horribly. Win win. Judge had Tourette's syndrome. There was no cure, but they had an arrangement, this affliction in him. Win. His full name, Judge Terrence Troy, his USMC rank at retirement, gunnery sergeant. His current profession, bounty hunter. So introducing our hit woman. The church hammer. Lorinda Jordan waited in the church parking lot in her SUV, her binoculars raised. Visible through the church's barred windows, Pastor Darlington Beckner flipped through hills in a sparsely furnished anteroom behind the altar, smoothing out the rabbit eared pages, straightening the piles. This was taking longer than Lorinda expected. Regardless, she would not sully the sanctity of a church. The pastor hobbled to the door on aged legs and exited the ante room. Her binoculars followed his progress to the back of the empty church. The Bible passage from the morning service had stayed with her. Matthew 19, verse 14. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. His reading was a sign that this was right and just. One other car was in the lot, the pastors. He exited the church, lifted his face skyward, breathed in the warm September air. His wife's recent passing had softened his conservative leanings. This was how the faithful, capital T, capital F, a religious splinter group, had explained it to Lorinda. He'd lost his own gospel, and this made him dangerous. The faithful, Lorinda's confidants and spiritual guides, composed of town elders, 
captains of industry, televangelists, and politicians, and her clandestine employers on a contract-by-contract -contract basis. The faithful began shadowing the pastor 30 years ago. He'd never try to contact anyone of political, municipal, or jurisprudence consequence, as far as they knew. His marriage was dead back then, but over time it had resurrected itself. If he'd felt the urge to confess a certain extramarital transgression to his wife, something they'd used to blackmail him, they were fairly sure he hadn't. Nothing else they'd seen had merited any action until now. His first misstep was to contact the FBI. His second was booking a flight to D.C. where they thought he might divulge one consequential miscarriage of duty from his time as the county's adoption agency director, providing information to the faithful from records sealed by law about a certain 1970 closed adoption. Pastor Beckner was now a new threat to the war on the unborn, a war the faithful felt was close to being won. They had texted Lorinda, they had texted Lorinda this morning, CH, your new penance is to fix this. The Lord be with you. CH, short for the church hammer. The pastor unlocked his car. She waited until she he climbed inside so the mess would stay contained. Pastor Beckner, she called. She approached his car on foot, dimples accenting her warm smile. Hello, a moment of your time, please. Her smile widened as she drew closer. His car window powered the rest of the way down. Of course, miss, how can I help you? Five paces from the car, she raised her right arm ready to shake his hand. At three paces, a small ballistic knife strapped to her wrist inside her jacket, ejected from its compressed air sheath with a quiet thock, the short blade entering his neck, severing his vocal cords. He gripped his throat, a gurgling crimson leak spurting through his fingers onto the steering wheel and dash, asphyxiating him in his own blood. She clapped his shoulder like an old friend and scanned the empty parking lot for inquiring eyes, reconfirming there were no witnesses. She removed the knife from his neck and wiped the blood on his shirt. Such a wonderful reading today, Pastor, she said. Thank you, and may you rest in peace. Lorinda reached into his shirt pocket for a jewel pen, something she'd noticed during his sermon for proof that she carried out the deed. Or at least, that's what was what she told herself. Thank you. We have one last chance to get books from the authors. I also have a writing game out there if any of you are interested in exploring that. And we've got books here, and the authors will still be here for another 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you so much for being such a great audience and showing up tonight to support the library. Thank you.